Before we get into today's video, please consider heading over to www.patreon.com forward slash CAEV, it will be at the bottom of the screen, and consider becoming a patron. I have recently lost my job, so any and all donations and contributions help towards keeping the channel active and the lights on. So please consider heading over there, and I will see you all in the video. First things first, before I actually get into the video and explain what I'm doing, I apologise for the poor lighting. The light bulb has blown, so I'm without lights. I've got a little bit of a fairy light thing here and the light of my screen, so you're going to have to bear with. It actually provides better lighting for my video than anything else. But without further ado, let's actually explain what's going on. With everything that's going on in the world at the moment, what with the George Floyd thing and the riots, I've come across this gem from Ben & Jerry's. You know, Ben & Jerry's, the ice cream company who's deciding to go the social justice route and basically talk about complete and utter nonsense. I've been reading through this and I've been gathering basically what they're trying to say, but the thing is they're wrong on a lot of the... Uh, they're wrong on a lot of what they're trying to say. Obviously, if you hear cars in the background, I do apologise. It's bloody hot, so I have my window open behind the curtain. So... <laughs> There are some things that I will be going through and disproving, or basically not disproving, but giving more context to, given data. But there are some things that show that are not really data driven and they're basically just anecdotes. So I'm going to use experiences from my own life. Obviously, I don't exactly know how long this video is going to be or how scientific it's going to be, but I'm just sick and tired of the narrative that's being pushed at the moment that everything disproportionately targets minorities now things are go sorry things are going to disproportionately affect minorities for a simple reason is they are minorities anything that affects them beyond their uh what their statistics of the of the population suggests is quote unquote disproportionately affecting them it does not mean that what the reason that they're being disproportionately affected is due to what they're trying to claim it is due to aka systemic racism so without further ado let's actually go into the video shall we seven reasons we know systemic racism is real by ben and jerry's it wasn't too long ago that a lot of people were talking about a post-racial america we had elected a black president for the first time most of this stuff that has that you're going to be uh, actually quoting happened under Obama, but let's not let's not uh, talk about that, shall we? Uh, and then went ahead and re-elected him four years later, and the country was feeling pretty good about itself. While Barack's Obama president, uh, presidency was indeed a profound and meaningful mark for true progress, racism, of course, never really went away. No. Uh, minorities actually felt emboldened to be racist to everybody else but don't listen to me I'm just a white person and apparently can't face racism according to people like this but no, nonetheless uh, the, uh, the presence of a black president, hockey star or movie franchise superhero however welcome and exciting cannot reverse centuries of racial injustice in fact racism is built right into every level of our society in ways that might surprise you and that's where you lost me because it's not built into society sure there are people and there are idiots who are racist but society as a whole is pretty welcoming of people of well of all races actually but n nonetheless racism of this uh, sorry racism at every level of society racism of this kind racism is that infects the very structure of our society is called systemic racism and at first glance it might be difficult to detect that's because most of the time it's not there well you're seen as systemic racism is just people's choices it's, it's simply that re it's sim it's simply that simple since the election of donald trump hate crimes have been on the rise no that is where you're wrong. Reporting of hate crimes has been on the rise. Hate crimes themselves have actually dropped a little. But do you know? But this is the thing, simple thing. Do you know why hate crimes reportings has been on the rise? 
is because they're now including more police precinct in giving over the statistics of theirs of hate crimes. So, of course, the more precincts and the more police forces you actually bring into the fold of how you're recording your data, of course, it's going to seem like there are more that's going on, but that's not sim that's simply not the case. It's simply the fact that the more you record something, the more it's going to be. The hate crime levels have actually stayed the same. They're just uh, being reported on more. Or not exactly reported on more, but they're actually being recorded more. That sort of thing. Hence why they're going on the rise. It's going. It's like her saying, uh, murders. Murders are staying, staying the same and relatively dropping. But if you bring in more ways to record how a murder is done... Of course, it's going to seem like that's on the rise, but that is simply not the case. It's simply the fact that they're bringing in more data and more ways to accrue data. Right. White supremacists have been emboldened. So have blacks, black supremacists, Muslim supremacists, and about any other supremacist you could think of. It's because we live in a time where racial, seg uh, sorry, not racial segregation, but... Uh, we live in a time where racial supremacy is actually on the rise in general all over the world, from people in Africa going around and just killing white farmers to, uh, well, white supremacists, even though there are significantly few of those to begin with. But that's neither here nor there. Anti-immigrant rhetoric has been in has intensified. No, everyone who I know who supports Trump says the same. If you want, if you, they welcome immigrants. If you want to come here sorry or go to america legally fine do it but wait in line like everyone else what people don't like is the illegal immigrants going in at that because that impacts everybody in fact you want to sit here and talk about systemic racism imagine you're going to go through and you're going to see a bunch of statistics that show black people at the bottom of everything well if you have a bunch of illegal immigrants coming in and doing everything under the table who do you think that's going to undermine the most it's certainly not going to be the white people you claim are at the top is it it's going to be those exact same black, uh, black people who now you're fighting for in this sort of thing when it comes to it it's trying to uh, restrict immigration and trying to curb illegal immigration actually helps the black community and helps minority communities because it gives them the option and gives them the advantage of getting at jobs. Even if they are at the lower levels of society, it still enables them to get jobs. You'd think that you'd think that these people, uh, people like Ben and Jerry's, would actually welcome that because it aids in people getting work, but. Nevertheless, we condemn these awful acts of prejudice and bias and hate, but systemic racism is something different. No. Uh, it's less about violence or burning crosses than it is about everyday decisions made by people who may not even think of themselves as racist. In other words, you're basically going to the, uh, the definition of despite you not actually being racist, you're still racist because your mind. So you're basically going the thought crime route. Uh, why am I not surprised? As sociologist, well, there's your first mistake. You have you have a sociologist. Uh, you value a sociologist's opinion. Eduardo Benil, uh, Benilla Silva has said the main problem nowadays is that is not the folk folks with the hoods, but the folks dressed in suits. What does that even mean? Can black people not wear suits? I'm confused. Systemic racism persists in our schools, offices, court system, public uh, police departments, and elsewhere. Why? Think about it. When white people occupy most positions of decision-making power, people of cover have, color have a difficult time getting a fair shake, let alone getting ahead. You literally just said that you had a black president for eight years. Eight years you had a black president. Not only did people elect him once, they elected him twice. If there was people were really as systemically racist as you thought they would, these people, you do know these people who have decision making power, they elected him twice. Those same people you're saying who don't like, uh, 
minorities getting ahead elected a minority to the highest position of power in the world. Right. I honestly don't get what you're coming from. We all have to do better, a better job of calling out systemic racism. Here are seven ways we know that it's real. Wealth. This should be a fun one. According to one study, one study, white families hold 90% of the na uh, national wealth, Latino families hold 2.3%, and family uh, black families hold 2.6%. Well, if that's the case, surely Latino families, which are predominantly white, white Latino, are the most impacted. But no, apparently you go straight for the black families. But nonetheless... Not only that, the Great Recession hit minority families particularly hard and the wealth gap has increased. Think about this, for every $100 white families earn in, in, in income, black families earn just fifty-seven thirty. That's almost unbelievable and it's a huge racial uh, justice issue. Now do Latino families, because I'd absolutely love to hear that. But that's neither here nor there. Let's actually go to the most earn, the highest earners in America by race and ethnicity so it's not just being broken down by a simple thing list of ethnic groups in the United States by household income when it comes to those who earn the most Indians ie people from India hold the most at almost twice what white Americans earn M median of course and well that's what over four times what black and African American or black or African Americans earn, but let's actually go via ethnicity, because as you can see here, I'll actually zoom in for you guys. No two white ethnic people earn the same. They there's differences between so many different breakdowns of white people this is the problem with doing averages you end up with things that don't uh, don't actually make up don't actually make any sense like Indian Americans they make the most and then it's Australian Americans South African Americans Taiwanese Americans you got East Asians white people are actually third highest earners and there's a huge, there's actually a higher gap between uh, East Asians and White Americans than there are White Americans and Middle Easterns. But that's neither here nor there. That's the first point destroyed because obviously, let's put it this way. If they controlled 90% of the wealth, let's break that down by each individual ethnic of white people. Because obviously you're going to have a different, a, a totally different experience when it comes to that sort of thing. Well, anyway, employment. It's next to impossible to build wealth without steady and rewarding un, uh, employment. But the black unemployment rate has been consistently twice that of whites over the past 60 years. No matter what has been going on with the economy, whether it's up or down Maybe higher education would help out with that. Well, according to da uh, data, blacks with college degrees are twice as likely to be unemployed as all other graduates. That's because when it comes to blacks with, uh, sorry, with uh, college degrees, they're less likely to want to work menial tasks such as McDonald's, cleaning up the street, cleaning toilets, or that sort of thing. Now, I'm not saying... They should have to if they have a college degree, but it is one of those things. When it comes to that sort of thing, white people don't really give a rat's ass what they do as long as they do a job. That's exactly how I am. I'd rather have a job cleaning toilets than no job at all. That, but that's just me. I suppose that's the worth it, work ethic I've been brought up with. And that I'm physically disabled. So there we go. Uh, that may be because one study found job applicants with white sounding names get called back about 50% more uh, of the time than applicants with black sounding names even if they have identical resumes. But what is a black sounding name? Are you, are you stereotyping blacks to having weird names? 
because I have a white friend who has one of the weirdest names you could ever think about, and his name has never been a problem. But again, that's all, neither here nor there. When it comes to this sort of thing, uh, when it comes to wealth, here's the unemployment numbers from last year to this year. Now, we've had been in the middle of, of a recession since then, but if we go to whites, from a uh, total of 16 years and over, when it comes to being unemployed, white people have stayed relatively the same. But, and here's the big but, if you can see that right next to white, it says African, sorry, black or African American. When it comes to it, black versus African American have had the lowest sorry the highest fall in unemployment when it comes to white people it was a point one difference in a drop when it comes to a uh, black or african it's point five of a percent when it comes to asian it's gone up by point two percent and when it comes to hispanic or latino it goes up by point three percent the people who tend to be getting jobs these days and have an unemployment fall are well black or african they tend to be getting the most jobs lately when it comes to but this is the point most people when it these people don't want to look up these these actual statistics to actually have a look at what is actually happening when it comes to black and white unemployment rates, they're falling the most, which means black people tend to be getting jobs more than any other race. But there we go. As education, let's discuss education a little more in depth. If you thought that preschool at least was racism free zone, well, consider that white, while black children constitute 18% of preschoolers nationwide, they make up nearly 50% of suspensions when all groups across all groups all age groups are examined black students are three times more likely to be suspended than white students even when their infractions are similar i don't see how this is an issue i honestly don't you may may sit there and call me racist for this sort of thing but i honestly don't see how this is an issue even when their infractions are similar okay what are the benchmarks for why they were suspended did they continue to do it did they was it just a one and done or was it over a period of time we don't know they just say when the infractions are similar well that can be a that can be due to a number of things but criminal justice this is a fun one that i actually wanted to get into because it's it's a an interesting one and given this, perhaps it should be uh, come to know as no surprise that even though, as we said, blacks make up 13% of the population, they represent about 40% of the prison population. And they also represent about 52% of all violent murders. But I, I don't know what these people want to try and present when it comes to this sort of thing. If you disproportionately affect crime, you're going to disproportionately be thrown into prison for it. It, ju it's, it is just what it is. Why is that? Perhaps it's because if a black person and a white person each commit a crime, the black person has a better chance of being arrested. It is also true that once arrested, black people are convicted more often than white people. But the thing is, this... Uh, actually, I'll hold off on that point. And for many years, a law has assigned much harsher sentences for using or possessing crack, for example, compared to cocaine. That's because crack is a worse drug than cocaine. Hence why it gets a harsher punishment, but that's neither here nor there. Finally, when black, pe black people are convicted, they are about 20% more likely to be sentenced to jail time and typically sees sentences 20% longer than those for whites who are convicted of similar crimes. And as we know, a felony conviction means in many states that you will lose your right to vote. Right now in America, more than seven four, uh, more than seven point four percent of adult African American population is disenfranchised compared to one point eight percent of non American, non African American population. But it will still work out that more white people can't vote than black people. But that's either here or there. 
we just I just want to address the same point that they're going about saying that they're con uh, treated harshly. You'll say this is systemic racism, but let's go to this study, shall we? Would you consider that this to be systemic sexism? Because that is what you're implying. Uh, Professor Starr's research shows large unexplained gender disparities in federal uh, criminal cases. If you're a criminal defendant, it may help a lot to be a woman. At least that's what Professor Sonia Starr's research on federal criminal cases suggests. Professor Starr's recent paper estimating gender disparities in federal criminal cases looks closely at a large data set of federal cases and reveals some significant findings. After controlling for the arrest offences, criminal history and other prior characteristics, men receive 63% longer uh, sentences on average than women do, and women are twice as likely to avoid incarceration if convicted. This gender gap is about six times as large as the racial disparity that uh, Professor Sonia Starr found in another recent paper. This is the same person that found the statistics that you're going off here ben and jerry's so you can't even say it's a hack or someone saying something that can't be proven i'm using the exact same person that you are using women get away with crim uh, crime a lot more than men do and are actually given lighter sentences for it now given all of this would you say that this disproportionately affects men and that America is a systemically sexist country. Not against women, against men. I notice you don't seem to be uh, pointing this out in your statistics here. Like, because you don't... I, I, I expect you don't want to, given that you're a feminist country... Uh, sorry, company. But all of these here disproportionately affect men. Why don't you want to admit that? I know you have narratives to push, and I can respect that. At least you, you're not hiding the fact that you have narratives to push. You openly push them like you're doing here. But that's not even the case. And obviously, it goes on about housing. Well, I've been, I can be uh, considered what has been legally classed as homeless a couple of times in my life because we've not had a permanent fixed abode for more than x amount of time but it basically goes to say that homeowner black ownership is now an all-time low 42 percent compared to 72 percent for whites well recently there's just been riots where people's houses and companies and businesses and stuff like that has been burnt to the ground by these same people that you're put uh, standing up for but that's neither here nor there. Surveillance. This is a fun one. If you're white, you don't usually need to worry about being monitored by the police, but the day-to-day -day reality for African Americans is quite different. More than half of young black Americans know someone, including themselves, who has been harassed by the police. I have been harassed by police. I don't have a criminal record, but I have been harassed by police. It's because I grew up on a council estate. Or, sorry, not a council estate. Many council estates. And in case you don't know... But here in England, council estates have sort of a stereotype about them that that's where all the crime tends to happen. That's where the riffraff goes, that sort of thing. And I'm not sure how to tell you this, Ben and Jerry's, but when it comes to it, when uh, out of all the council estates I've lived on, there's only been two that had a minority family. So if growing up on a council estate with... 99.9% .9 other white people, or sorry, many council estates with that many white people, you can't exactly say it was a stereotype based on race. It was just because of how people acted. I'm sorry, but if I was to go into a shop because I grew up on those council estates, and obviously you can easily identify people who are from those council estates because of exactly how they dressed. Uh, I was followed around shops more times than I could count. It's something you get used to. Because obviously you're as like one of, you're like those people who have been stealing from the place, so you have people keep an eye on you a lot more than say if there was a posh person to walk in. 
let's put it this way where I was from I was more likely to be followed around the shop and watched because of how I dressed and where I was from than say a black person going in with a jacket and tie and it's just how it was it's not because of my race and it's not because of other factors it's the simple reason is I grew up on council estates where that the amount of crime came from now obviously again I do apologize for any noise outside because obviously I do have my window open so you're just going to have to bear with any sound you can hear healthcare African Americans in particular face discrimination in the world of healthcare too. A 2012 study found that a majority of doctors have unconscious racial biases when it comes to their black patients. Well, how the hell do they know if it's unconscious? Because, uh, have you noticed they put this in big letters, have a bias, but put it teeny tiny that it's unconscious racial bias. Everyone has a racial bias. It's, sim it's that simple. Black people have racial biases. Barack Obama would have had racial biases. He would have been more... In fact, he did. When it comes to anything like police shootings, he often ignored white people shot by police and focused exclusively on black people shot by police. That in itself is a racial bias. And it's one presented by a black person, but that's neither here nor there. And black Americans are far more likely than whites to uh, than whites to lack of access to emergency medical care. That is wrong. If it's emergency medical care, they can go into a an emergency room or a clinic. That is that, that simple. They're not denied it for because they're black. They just tend to not go to the hospital. Don't ask me why, that's on them. I can't tell you what they think, but there we go. The hospitals they go to tend to be less well funded and staffed by practitioners with less experience. But even black doctors face discrimination. They are less likely than their similarly credentialed white peers to receive government grants for research projects. And it seems like uh, facing a lifetime of racism leave African Americans vulnerable vulnerable to developing stress-related health issues that can lead to chronic issue, issues later in life. Now do white people. If facing racism their entire lives can lead to uh, chronic issues later in life, imagine what white people develop when they're told from the day they're born up until the time they leave college that everything they do is racist. They control a system of racism, they need to unpack their racism, they need to be clear of their unconscious biases, they need to address their unconscious biases, they need to address their unclear, uh, sorry, yeah, unclear racism, this, that and the other. Imagine what they can think or imagine what they can go through imagine what they face or what they feel if being a victim of racism leaves african americans vulnerable then surely being talked down to and spoken to exactly like white people are spoken to like you're speaking to white people imagine that imagine yeah, let's be clear. Systemic racism is a corrosive and widespread problem in our society, and we all need to do a better job of confronting it in our towns, in our neighborhoods, and in ourselves. Imagine, imagine every single day of your school life, you're being told that you need to address the racism in yourself, and it doesn't matter whether you yourself are actually racist or exhibit racism you're unconsciously racist your society is racist your neighborhoods are racist you're racist your siblings are racist your family's racist the whole system you know it is racist imagine you have to face that you're going to develop problems as well imagine being told all that and then on top of that being told that you yourself cannot face racism because racism is a systemic issue and it only affects minorities you're going to grow up and you're going to be resentful of these sick people do you want to create racist because this is how you create racist if the moment you tell someone that they're racist from the moment they're born they're going to sit and think well i'm oh i'm constantly racist anyway i may as well embrace it it's like me, if I'm told I'm something, I'm going to simply say, well, yeah, of course I am. Now, let's get back to the issue. It's the same when I argue with a feminist online. And she'll sit down, she'll call me an incel, she'll call, call me a misogynist, she'll call me a sexist, she'll call me any name under the sun. 
to try and not address the points I make. And this is exactly what these people like this try to do. They'll sit there and call you racist left, right and centre because they don't want to address and don't want to face or don't want you to actually realise that what they're spewing is total utter nonsense. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the video. Sorry if it's video is actually a bit longer than intended. I was just wanted to ramble on and make a decent enough video for you guys. So anyway, let me know what you guys think about this whole situation in the comment section down below and I'll try to get to every single one I can. Obviously head to the link in the top in the description and on screen and consider becoming a patron to keep the channel up and running. I appreciate you guys to no end and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.